Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our artist talk. We're coming to you from Collective Choice Art Gallery in Saskatoon. And our artist talk is all about basically two artists getting to know each other a little bit better and sharing that with you. So I'm sitting here with Kathleen Slaven, a painter, and my name is Diane Rouge Ellard. And again, welcome to this presentation through Art Now. So I'm going to start off. We're going to talk back and forth to each other. And I'm going to ask Kathleen, how did you start making art, Kathleen? Well, I would have to say that I grew up with it. Um, I, I was raised in a family with seven siblings and a modest income, and we were encouraged to create. Um, and so uh, that's how it started. And actually, uh, my seven siblings, there's several of us who have Went on to have professions in art in one way or another. So uh, as a, a young adult, I did a, a BA in art history, and then I did a lot of other things. And then at some point in midlife, uh, returned to art and started up taking classes um, at the former extension division in Saskatoon. And then I, I uh, was introduced to Emma Lake, and Kendergine campus that I fell in love with and was there probably 12 more sessions over the years with classes and independent retreats and also um, the, the artist workshop for the last five years that it ran before the, before the campus was closed. At some point in there, I started doing exhibitions, both solo and group, and I've done a lot. I don't know, 50, more than 50, here and there, and, uh, and then became involved with galleries, um, different galleries over time, and uh, at, uh, uh, in Regina and in Saskatoon, and even a rural one, and uh, now I'm happy to be here at Collective Choice. Yes. And, and you? And <laughs> I, uh, it's funny, we have um, some similarities in our background. Um, I've been drawing for sure forever. Um, I wrote down the grade school, but it started before that because I can clearly remember my mom bringing little scraps of paper and a pen to church so she, she could <laughs> keep me quiet while it was by drawing. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was, and I've said this before, um, I was that kid. I was that kid in school that was the artist, you know, the artist. Um, not that I was any more talented, but we tend to label people. Well, that's the, the person who does well at math. That's the, thought I was the artist. I never thought about it when I went to the University of Saskatchewan. I never crossed my mind to get a degree in art. I didn't even really think you could do that. So I went into computer science, which was wonderful, but really not for me. And I took one drawing class and that's it, totally it. And then I started taking some art history and I just totally fell in love and I decided, well, that's, I'm gonna get a BFA because it's a degree, you know? And um, no turning back, except I never really went the full route of being a full-time artist. I'm still not a full-time artist. I have another job. And I've been painting, see, I got my BFA, I aged myself here, but in 1987. And so it's been a long time. Certainly, I didn't paint um, flat out that whole time. Uh, kids in there and a life, and, but for the last, you know, this is the wonderful thing about midlife, right? So for the past, you know, seven years or so, I've been able to focus a lot more on painting and showing. I always painted, mm -hmm. I always did art, and I've also been really interested in taking more workshops. Um, I've been to Red Deer College and up to um, Ness Creek for their art sessions up there. So where I wasn't able to do that before, I'm starting to fill in with that more now and showing more. And uh, yeah, happy to be here at Collective Choice. I've been here since I just checked with Anne since 2018 and you said you well, just- Well, actually, I, yes, I just came here in January just in time to welcome the, the uh, pandemic in Canada, so. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I had anything to do with it. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and then the next question on our list is, why do you make art? Well, I, I think uh, it's, it's just an imperative, an imperative to create. And I, I 
but is an example of that, what kind of imperative that is, and that a few years ago I actually lost vision in one eye and after and so that of course put a uh, caused a crisis in my art life and it took a couple of years of sort of lost time in ways and but also a lot of adventure to try and get back but it never occurred to me that I wouldn't continue to paint and I think it creating art is that kind of imperative for people who do it and uh, and in the long run you know it opens some uh, some new doors and creativity and uh, pushed me to experimentation I had to relearn the relationship between the the uh, uh, tool and the and the surface because that that vision was gone anyway but uh, yeah so I think it's just that kind of emphasis that sort of pushes people to do it and keep at it I just never really thought that I would do anything else right. And for me, it's funny because, you know, when you say that, I also lost the vision in one eye, not for very long, for about a year, though, and um, it was very scary. I never, again, I never thought about not painting, but I thought, how is this ever going to be comfortable again, right? Mm -hmm. And now that I have full vision and both mm -hmm. eyes, it, it's a relief, but it wasn't a question of, how am I going to stop? I did think, what would happen if I completely lose my sight, mm -hmm. that scares me mm -hmm. a lot because I have such a visceral connection to what I see. Yes. And painting it, but somehow interpreting, interpreting what I see, mm -hmm. whether it's a landscape or it's light and shadow or line, whatever it is, it really drives me to do it. You know, and it's the same thing. I just can't imagine not making art. I, I, People say, well, why, why do you do it? Because I do have to fit it in. Um, and it's, it's extremely important. And I think anybody who's creative, but particularly anybody who's involved um, in making visual art or music, I would imagine is the same, um, is just, it's another, it's another need. Like, mm -hmm. Well, I had gradually <laughs> reduced my work time uh, from full time down to four days and then to three days. So I was, I had been in the process of buying myself more time in my life to create art. And then, of course, uh, and then had just sort of got nicely on that track when I had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Which, was, you know, as I said, there was some, there's some um, whatever, uh, rays behind the clouds here, which are, it turned out, I think, that uh, it has taken me in some good direction. But anyway, but I, it, it, you know, just to, uh, keeping on working was it really, even on when I had a slump in art in other ways, I never really, some people took time off and did whatever, or couldn't go on until they were inspired again. I always felt I needed to continue to work and, and it would happen. Yeah, so, so, so how, what's, what's the process? So what is your process when you're working? Um, well, I, I know you work from, on plein air quite often, so outside. I don't tend to do that just because of my paying job doesn't allow me to do that. Um, at least not during the day, which is what would be preferable. I, um, I do get out and take photographs. Um, I spend a lot of time bothering my neighbors and farmers and anybody who's got kind of a nice a drive that they like, or they have land that has a great view, or it doesn't have to be a great view. It's just something that really moves them. And when they take me out in that, and I hear their stories, and I take pictures, and I get down on my belly, and I take pictures of the flowers or the sky or whatever, it just somehow unites me with that. Um, and then I get back to my studio, and for the most part, I don't sketch a lot. I'll do a little thumbnail sketch, maybe a value study, so look at lights and darks. Um, but I tend to compose right in my viewfinder, and I know right away. So you take hundreds of pictures in the summer, and I know I can feel it. I get a little shiver when I see it, and I, I'll think, okay, that's that's a painting. Some of them are more work. You have to crop and fiddle around and put things together. So that's how I get my image. And then to actually do the painting, I have an iPad on. It looks like a big music stand. 
And so I get a, an image that's got light coming through it. It's very nice and clear. And that's what I use beside my easel to paint. And to lay in my lights and darks, I actually, I absolutely love pattern and texture. And I discovered a little while ago these stencils. So I was in a uh, mixed media class and I thought, wow, I love these stencils. So I've been using them, I'll block in my areas with stencils. And they might be there at the end. You might see the odd little bit of stencil pattern, which you might not, right? Mm -hmm. And then the same thing, I, I, I'll quite often I'll have a board. So sometimes you see that border and it exists throughout the painting or it, sometimes it comes in at the end. Mm -hmm. So those tend to be the, the hallmarks of my style and that's how they've evolved. It's just a real interest in, in finding different ways to make marks and to allow those marks to show, to allow some of the process to show. So that's what well, I, I consider myself to be a mark maker as well. Right. And it's the process that I love, although my work begins quite I differently. Uh, it varies, but when I feel that I'm the most on with it, it actually begins with me not knowing what the end point will be. So I, I start by making marks. And I, I sometimes use textures. And I use texture a lot too, but it's usually, I don't know, it's, it's usually from many layers of trying to figure out what these marks are going to be that creates its own texture. But sometimes I do it intentionally as well, you know, with tar gel or, or, or stencils. But usually I, I sometimes work with stencils, but I usually cut the stencil and work with them, you know, but it doesn't, you know, it gets you the same way. But then, so the marks are more intuitive generally. And then at some point, the marks, I would say, start talking to each other. And then, and it might be lying with the mighty colors, but anyway. And then, I, if I persevere with that and don't try and tell them too much about what, what they should do, then um, at some point, they usually do um, speak to me. And, and it makes me think about reference materials that I have. I do take, I take, I take photos. I probably, I'm sure I don't take as many as you. I don't take as many as most people. I used to take more photos, but I, I just don't take as many as I used to for some other reasons. But anyway, um, but I have lots of reference material and I, I start looking back and forth at my reference material and at the marks and, and, and see where that takes me. So that's kind of the process that I have. Sometimes I, I start with something. This painting behind me, the flax fields, actually started more in the way that you're talking about that uh, my cousin's son had posed, had posed some beautiful pieces, uh, painting and photos of, it, of the, the farm where he lives and farms and where my mother started her life and grew up. Here, here. And so one time he, he did have a flax field and I asked him if I could use that image for reference. So this is not his photo, but it was my image of that. But anyway, so I can work that way too. Whereas this photo much more came from, although I did have a photo reference that I eventually used. Um, if you could see it, you'd see this from a lot of surface stuff going on in this photo that, that this, uh, in this painting was much less certain to begin where it was going. Mm -hmm. So anyway, interesting. That is very Quite interesting. Process. It's very yeah. interesting. And I think the most interesting things happen in art when we let go of the references and allow yes. the artwork. <laughs> yeah. um, our, our, our producer is telling us to speak to the camera. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, we're getting too involved. We're getting too involved. See, that's what happens when and I gotta watch yeah, the time okay. too. We're, we're actually yeah chugging through time. Okay, so, so I, did you have any ins inspiring sort of situations, particular ones that you? You know, I mentioned? I have this feeling about inspiration, and it's similar to what you had said. I think if you wait for inspiration, you will never pick up a brush. I think things that inspire me are what happen as I'm painting. 
I'll get <laughs> the professor that said it's the oops aha moment where you put something down and you think, oh, wait. So those marks start to talk to each other. And that's that moment when you can leave that reference behind and, and step back and go, okay, now I have to deal with this painting. I have to deal with what's on the surface because honestly, who cares what the reference material looks like? And sometimes that's a war, right? And sometimes it's a nice conversation. But yeah, um, inspiration I think is highly overrated. Um, I think work ethic is a huge thing and to be able to get into the studio and work when you're feeling like you have painter's block yeah. is a tough, tough thing. And it's something that each of us has to deal with. But it really is the only way to cure it. And yeah, you do a lot of crappy things and then you paint over. And that's how you get laughed when you talked about your texture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of builds texture. Sometimes good, sometimes not. <laughs> how about you? Well, that's interesting because what you're calling, what you're dismissing as uh, inspiration um, is what I dismiss as talent. People say, oh, I, you know, talent. And I think talent, it's hard work. And it's, I think you can have, you can have talent, but if you don't, if you're not well ready to do the work, you may as well just stay in bed, you know. But I, once in a while, there is something that is inspiring. And I, and I, I have one of those, not a lot, but one of them. In 2015 in Saskatchewan, as everyone knows, it is large forest fires in the north and I have a cabin it's way off on lake and, a, and that lake uh, and the fires were in that area and, and it was uh, fortunate that none of the cabins burned but in almost the entire uh, shoreline what had burned and I have been painting up there used to be on planner I do I still do some but much less than I used to but anyway the uh, um, but I probably painted 100 paintings of that shoreline and area and a tree here and there or whatever, but I, the undergrowth, I, I like the undergrowth, the undergrowth from my deck and the reflections on the lake, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and then the fire happened and then we were actually up there the day that the first light, uh, stri lightning strike that sort of started in our area hit and we were all requested <laughs> to leave. And uh, anyway, by the time we got to go back up there and got out in the canoe and went around the lake, um, this muse that I had always been able to depend on uh, was um, dramatically changed. So it started, you know, it's in the beginning it was, um, you know, all the undergrowth was burned. So it was, was white ground and black, stark black trunks. And, and, it, and then, you know, eventually things started coming back. And so I have, I started painting that. And so I painted from the black and white beginnings of that, a, a painting or two or more every year since then just sort of recording for my own. I mean, this was a dramatic, another dramatic incident to, to lose that, but, but the regrowth has, and the rebirth has been wonderful to see, you know, and uh, so those of you who have seen that will know what I mean by that. It's just, but I would say there are those kind of things that do cause an inspiration in a way that I just wanted to keep painting that. I haven't been painted this year, so maybe I'm done now. <laughs> but I haven't, it's actually been very windy in the north, so I've not gotten out on the lake very much, my old canoe. Yeah. Anyway. Shows you that inspiration um, can come from anything. It doesn't have to be that beautiful ah, moment, no. right? It can be something, something dramatic. dramatic. Like, yeah. 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 Initially, dramatic in such a fun unfortunate way and being forced to see beauty in a really different way yeah i think that was yeah. you know i mean when the moss is all burned off the rocks at the ends of a lake they're a different color you know i mean it's, it's just a, a lot of things that you just don't that you take for granted so yeah so how about research do you do any research um i i i always think of research as sitting down with books or at the computer and researching that way i guess I research on Instagram now quite a bit. I look at artists that I like um, and my photographs, but interest or research per se, not really, not in the way that <clears throat> I, I think of research. How about you? I, I'm about the same as you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I travel and when I travel, I, I see art. I mean, this, 
um, pretty much nowhere that I go that I don't see art. There's, there's galleries all over the world and, uh, um, or other, you know, art things. And, uh, but beyond that, I, I, like you, I, I follow artists and I, I follow them by going to galleries and seeing their work or I follow them on Instagram and I, you know, I think that all of that is good. I do have a shelf full of books in my studio that sometimes get pulled out. They've been collected over the years and I do, I do turn to that too, but not, not as much as the other ways. So, yeah. Thank God for the internet. Yeah, it's it's a, changed yeah. How well, it's, it's, made, it's made it easy. You can you can do it while you're watching. Why the TV's on and whatever. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're close to a half hour. Are we? And mm -hmm. I'm looking at our producer over here. I showed 22 minutes on this one. Oh, I could, oh, we could be wrong then. A little bit more. So, okay. Let's me ask. I'll ask you this. Okay. Is the artist life lonely? How do you find that? Because you and I both have soul practices in yes, yes. studios and um, so. Um, um, I don't find. I actually don't enjoy um, creating my artwork around anyone else. I like that to be completely solitary. Even though, like right now, I'm in uh, a mentorship and I'm learning how to do encaustic, mm -hmm. and I know while I'm there and learning. I won't feel the same as when I get along with it and get be able to um, think. <laughs> and I need that quiet, the quiet of my thoughts and that solitariness and that's introversion. And that's how I, I recharge my batteries. Mm -hmm. I have found though, with COVID, I moved my work office into my studio because it was the best place to get the internet. And I had a table there. And so I had my computer and then my easel, which was away during the day, and then I would pull it out. It was like pulling teeth for me to go into the studio. I, what I learned was I need to get out of my house, out of my solitary existence as an artist, okay, in order to be able to create, which was, it was really interesting. So when I, when I went back to work, even though I work in my own office, I'm still interacting with people. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be other artists. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I love that. I love the chance to talk to other artists and to do critiques and work with other artists that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in a way, I'm, I'm happy that I am an introvert and I'm, I live in a small town and I'm glad I'm there too because I think I would spend some of my time socializing more than I do um, because I do love feeling that as well. But the creation of art itself I have no loneliness and that is totally full for me. No, so, yeah, no, I'm I'm well I'm with you on that on all of, of that. I choose I choose to have a solo practice. But I, I have been I I have been in groups from time to time and there's something from that, but eventually I, I always have to leave the group and go back to working on my own. And that's definitely when I walk in my studio, that's definitely my happy space and I'm I'm there to work and and I uh, it's, a, it's it's a special place to be. I do choose the company of other artists. I find it's necessary. And I I back in uh, 2005 I sort of was involved with starting a, our critique group. And there's I think we're about I forget how many we are nine and ten, but we've been meeting pretty much monthly, not in the summers, but otherwise <clears throat> since then. And, and we bring pieces that we're struggling with and, and share critique. And a number of those artists are actually in some of the different um, Art Now galleries uh, as a part of uh, this event. And, and so there's some good, solid advice there. And uh, I, th I, think we, I think we need other artists, but then I need, the, I need to take that advice and decide what of it belongs to me and go back to my solo studio. <laughs> go on. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's true for me too. I have one or two artists that are close by and I have one that has a really keen eye and if I'm having some trouble, she'll nail it. Mm -hmm. She'll <laughs> she just she just looks at it and she and she's blunt. 
And that I think that's why we seek out other artists is not to get that pat on the back. No, it's, it's not for a love in. It's when we're yeah, it's when we're struggling. Yeah. 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 Oh. Anyway, are we uh, running out of time? I'm gonna look at the time. I think we want to take we want to have the time to thank people for Absolutely. for for coming out to in to listen to us and hope that there's been something in what we said that was was uh, useful and uh, I uh, the Sask and Sask galleries for doing art now. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Art now is my favorite time of year and I think it's fabulous that Sask galleries and the galleries involved have found a way to still go on with the show and it's a huge challenge and I hope that people enjoyed our little chat. I know I did. <laughs> I learned a lot about Kathleen. And um, sorry if we got really involved because that tends to happen. But well, <laughs> that's all. That's what it was about right. today, I guess. That's what it was about. So thank you very much. And um, hopefully we'll see people at some event at our now. Yes. <laughs>